So you have already downloaded, installed Cakewalk by Band Lab, and something happens. When you get ready to click on the software, there is this notification that pops up, and ooh, we hate this little asterisk, meaning warning, there are no audio devices on the current driver model for your system. When you receive errors like this, I know you get so frustrated, you just wanna throw something out the window. On this particular video, I'm gonna show you some of the problems that you may face when you're first getting started with Cakewalk and how to fix those problems. Stay tuned, let's get into it. All right, so you're getting started, you open up your Cakewalk doll, and now for some reason, you are unable to get playback because you received that nasty little asterisk error that popped up in the beginning. Well, one thing that might be the problem is that, first off, it's your audio interface. Audio interface is not turned on. Your audio interface maybe it came unplugged via USB, or maybe the drivers are having errors or problems with it. So I would start there first. Okay, so what you wanna do is make sure that you go up to preferences. Uh, you can press P on the keyboard as well for a shortcut. And you wanna make sure that your devices are set up correctly, that you are seeing your input and your output as your interface up here. I am using the X-Air, X18, so that is my ASIO drivers that are up there. I have it, it looks like everything is good on my end, so I'm fine. But if for some reason you get an error like that, it's just indicating that, you know, some reason we're not seeing the drivers or we're not seeing your audio device. Um, and it could be possibly that, you know, like I said, you don't have it turned on, as simple as that. Or like I said, it can come unplug, or the drivers may give you issues, you might have to reinstall the drivers. So this is one of the things that may occur. Second, piggybacking off of that particular problem, another problem that you may have is when you get to your project, I've created my new project. When you look up here at the playback controls and you see right here where it says 4816, that is 48 kilohertz and 16 bit. Sometimes what happens is you might get an error because your audio interface may be set to one setting, but Cakewalk by Bandlab is set to another setting. So if you click here and the sampling rate is set to 48,000 or 48 kilohertz, and if I click on 44.1, guess what's gonna happen? I get this error that says the default audio format is not compatible with one or more sound cards. It's gotta be reset to 48,000. So it's gonna reset it for me anyway. I try to turn it to 44. Now this is a cool feature of and I don't think it used to do this before, this, but or maybe it's just my particular mixer that is allowing me to do this because normally when my focus right, the Scarlett 2i4, if I had this set to 48, but I had my Scarlett set on 44, it would just give me an error and I wouldn't be able to play it. Uh, it would just let me know that, hey, this is not working. So whenever I go to my X18, which is right here, and I go to setup, and when I click on my audio and MIDI, you can see it sets to 48. So if I switch it to 44, it'll actually switch it to 44 and Cakewalk as well. It has come up with the same message and it will do that. So make sure that your clock rate agrees with whatever you have set up in Cakewalk. Okay, another problem that you run into is that you have everything set up correctly. Your interface is right and now you have the right bit depth and the right kilohertz as far as your sample rate. You're good to go in that aspect, but now you're still having a problem because for some reason, your drivers are not being recognized. So when you get ready to play, uh, you may get an error, and I can't, I wish I could duplicate this error. I can, uh, and let me show you what I mean. Go to preferences and here, say for instance, I'm using my X18. My X18 works on ASIO drivers. But if I was to switch this to like, say for instance, MME, uh, you're gonna notice that it may not work. And sometimes in this case, it does work because the Behringer works with everything, but certain devices may not work correctly with it. Um, so I'm able to play and I can do something. I can even record something real quick. Uh, yeah, 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 let's do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and I got something recorded. 
Do and this. I can plug yeah, it back. Yeah, I'm gonna put my yeah, headphones yeah, on yeah, so I can hear yeah. this. Let's play this. it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. So I hear it and it played back. It's okay. You know, it's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but for instance, if I was to change this to, uh, let's say I change it to WDM and let's see if it still works on the Behringer. And see, it lowers all of this and it'll tell you which ones are not available. And this is the error that you get, audio driver error, okay? And it says the following drivers do not support the current audio format. So I don't know why this would happen to you, but for some reason, maybe it got changed or maybe you went in there, you changed it to a different driver setting. Um, so I'm just saying, this is one of the things that may happen and you might have to go back in and configure it and make sure that it's set to the right thing. Uh, I'm gonna say use anyway right now, but I know it's not gonna work. Let's see if it does anything. So like, yeah, it's not gonna work because I'm not gonna see it available up here. So I don't see it in my option. I do see in and out. Let's see if it works and let's see if it plays. Okay, and this is the error that you're gonna receive. And I talked about this in my getting started video. Uh, this is one of the things that you may see, unable to open audio playback device. I've received this message quite a bit throughout my time of working with digital audio workstations. Uh, and it's nothing bad that happens with it. It just means that something is not set up correctly. So watch this. You already know what I did wrong. So I showed you how to make it wrong. So you go into your device, you have it set incorrectly, whatever audio interface you're using, make sure that you know which drivers it uses. Uh, there's most of them, work best with ASIO. If you're using just a standard sound card that's in your computer, then yes, you're gonna use MME, or you might use WDM, whichever, uh, or you might use uh, Wasapi, I call it. But I need to go back to edit, I need to go to preferences, and I need to go back to my driver settings, my well, playback and recording, sorry, and I need to set it to ASIO, ASIO, it needs to be on ASIO for my mixer to work the right way. And then once it does that, it reassigns it automatically. And now it's showing up correctly. I see the devices are available and my inputs and my outputs. I can press apply, I can press close. And now when I press play. Do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you actually hear what you just recorded. If you're having that problem, really pay attention to the preferences within Cakewalk by BandLab because that's where most of your problems will lie if it's dealing with like a, you know, you're not getting the signal or you're not, it's not recording at all, it's not playing at all. So definitely check that out. Another problem that you may run into is I've recorded audio, but I'm only getting one side. So if that's the question that you're saying, I recorded my audio, but I'm only getting one side, I'm gonna start over fresh, I'm gonna delete that track. Control T to insert an audio track. And uh, because it's default, it's set to, well, right now the input's set to none. So first of all, if, if you're not getting a signal, I'm getting a signal because I clicked on record and it automatically set it to input one and two. But if I went back to none, I would not get a signal. Uh, and then once I press record, it sets it back to input one and two. And that, I think it does that automatically by default. But here's the problem. This will work because my mixer um, I'm running my uh, outputs are going directly into my computer. So they're coming through USB one and two, which happens to be channel one and two. So it's naturally going to receive the stereo signal from that. And if I did channel one, it'll receive both sides. If I did channel two, it'll receive both sides. But check out what happens when I click on input three, nothing. If you're wondering why you're not getting a signal, chances are that it's set to the wrong input channel. On my mixer, I am actually coming out of input four. And if I wanted a direct signal, I would go and I would set it to N4 or 4R. They updated this in Cakewalk because it used to say three, so it would say like three left and then three right. Um, but now they actually have them separated by track. So I think that works better and it's less confusing. So I need to make sure this is set to input four. And now I have a signal that I can record and I can record again. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, 
Record again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I've got I've got that recorded. I'm good to go. Now let's rewind. So far, I have set up my audio interface. I have checked to make sure that my sample rate is the same, is consistent with my interface. I have recorded some information, I recorded some audio, and I made sure that it's coming out of both sides. I've checked my uh, driver setting to make sure that it's set to ASIO. So I'm, I'm doing good so far. I, everything is going the way I want it to go. But there are some other problems that you may run into. So this problem that you may run into is that whenever you press the space bar to start it again, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you press the space bar the second time, it always jumps back to wherever this timeline is. Um, and this might be a problem that you're, that you're having, you know, that that's aggravating to you. I mean, some people it doesn't frustrate as much, but if you have 357 measures, on your song and that's a long song you have 357 measures and you're on measure 262 and now all of a sudden you need to make a quick adjustment to measure 263 you stop there but guess what it goes all the way back to measure one uh that is aggravating so let me show you how to fix that there are two options for this so first off if i press the space bar but again if i want to stop it See it jump back again. If you press the space bar by itself, if you want it to stop right where it's at in the timeline, press space to start. Put again. Press control yeah, yeah. space to stop. And notice that it moved that timeline right there. So the now time is right at beat measure one, beat four, 570 second uh, samples, whichever. So it's right there. All right. If that's where I want it to be, that's great. Now, I'm shortcut. If you want to rewind, press W, and it'll take it back to the beginning. Uh, so here's another option. Press Control W, and that's going to turn that toggle off. Okay, because this is just a setting. It's on and off, and it you can turn it off. So that way, it'll stop wherever you press the space bar. So if you press Control W, all right? Now, when I press the space bar, watch. Put again. Yeah. And I press the space bar by itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I press the space bar by itself again. So now, whenever I hit the space bar, it will automatically stop wherever it left out on the timeline. If you're having that problem, hopefully that fixes the problem. Shout out to Jesse Boy, who actually hit me up with this problem. I uh, was checking out one of the videos and said, hey, you know, I'm having this problem with it going back to, you know, measure one. So I was able to look this up and found the information for it. Um, so I hope this is this tip helps you. All right. So you got all that set up. And another problem that you definitely will run into sometimes, depending on how your PC is, if you got a capable PC, you got enough memory, you got enough hard drive space. It may not affect you as much, but if you are running a slower computer, you definitely will run into this problem. The ultimate dropout problem is the craziest thing that we never want to see when you're in the middle of a project. But what may happen is a few things. All right, so let's look at my performance on my particular computer, okay? This is a new computer that I built. I'm running a six core processor on it. I have two SSD drives, a 512 and 256 one, and this one is based off of my C drive, which is actually the 256 gig drive. So I'm using 181 gigabytes of it. I still got plenty of space, you know, but eventually that space can go real quick. I got a lot of videos on here. I got to get off. Uh, memory wise, I have 16 gigs. I'm using 12 gigs right now uh, at this moment. So if you see these numbers get in the red and you'll know when they play, Sometimes yeah, yeah. they fluctuate. Now I don't have a lot of tracks on here, so it's not going to use a lot of space or memory. But if you see it get in the red or it gets closer to that 100%, that definitely might affect it. Another thing that you can do is you can go up to your preferences and you can go to driver settings. Now, if you're running ASIO, you will not, you know, you can move this, but it might not affect it as much. Uh, sometimes this is grayed out. Uh, for ASIO <clears throat> because ASIO comes with its own panel. 
So when I go to my panel and I click on it, I see buffer size, a buffer settings right here, and I've got it set to 512 samples. So the rule of thumb is the larger the samples is, the more freedom your computer is going to have. It's not going to tie up your memory as much, but you also will have worse latency or you'll have more latency. I put it like that. Uh, if I lower the samples, then it's going to move a little quicker, uh, but it may tie up more memory. So you might want to come back here and make sure that you got this checked. Uh, did you get it checked on the right thing? I normally keep it 512, 256. If you feel like your latency is like really bad, like, you know, if you're like saying, hello, hello, you know, and it comes in that late, of course it's not gonna be that late. But if you see a, like a, a, a major delay, then you might wanna adjust this. On the buffer size here, you definitely can adjust the bar. You can go back between fast and safe. I try to keep it more in the middle You'll notice that a middle is 1,024 samples, and then a little faster is 512, which is fine for me. If you're getting the audio dropout, chances are that might be the problem. Uh, be careful trying to run this software. Like I said, it's a free software. I love the software, but any DAW that you run requires memory and space. You have to be careful if you're trying to run like an outdated, you know, you upgraded to Windows 10, you had Windows 7 on there, or whatever Windows you had on there, um, you wanna make sure that you're running something that's efficient for it. So, and if you're not sure what specs you really need for a computer, you know, definitely let me know in the comments below, uh, and I can help you out with that. If you have been enjoying this video so far, and if it's been helpful to you, definitely give it a thumbs up, like it, and, you know, subscribe to the channel because without you, I would not be able to do this. I'm so grateful for all of those that have came into my life through YouTube, that have commented, that have liked, that have shared, that have subscribed. Without you, I would not be able to do this. I'm so excited about being able to grow this channel and being able to help you all in your music careers. All right, this is the final tip for now. Now, there are many other troubleshooting tips that I need to cover but I just want to give you a taste. If you have anything in mind that you really need help with, definitely let me know in the comments below. All right, love you all. It's been real. Enjoy your day. Take care.